and off we go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. And now here's your host, Big Anklevich and Rish Outfield. Hi everybody, this is Big Anklevich. Welcome to another episode of the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. Here on my left is... Oh... Sorry, I, I didn't know if I was on your right or your left. There, there might have been someone else. Uh, Rish Outfield. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a virtual left. You're not really on my left, but we're pretending. Uh, you're on the left coast compared to me, though, so there's that. Okay. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, we're here with another uh, episode. I, I bet you thought our show had pod faded, but it turns out it's not quite there yet. We're still limping along. It's it's like um, when you'd write a message in lemon juice, and it's like, okay, now it's gone, guys. It's gone. Yeah, definitely gone. Oh, no, wait. I can I can almost read something. Okay, let me hold it closer to the flame. I can kind of... S- yeah, I can, <laughs> if I hold it up to the light in the window, I can see there's a slightly lighter color. Something like that. But yeah, Rish Outfield has prepared a little treat for us today. Uh, What is this story called, Rish? It be called Sin of Admission. Sin of Admission. Is it a story or is it a... what is it? Well, I mean, you could call it a sketch, or you could call it an audio drama, uh, or you could call it a bucket of crap. Okay. Whatever uh, makes you smile. Okay, well, that was what I was leaning toward. I was just hoping you would give me permission. So, thank you. Uh, Anyways, uh, this bucket of crap has been provided for us by uh, Rish Outfield. Uh, Sin of admission. Not quite our usual fare, because we don't always do audio drama, but on occasion we have. I think you were the last person to bring us audio drama, right? With, uh, was that our Halloween story a couple years ago? Where it was the... Uh, oh, the... Uh, from Another World? Is that what it was called? I, the brother from Another Planet? I, yeah, I, I think it was <laughs> From Another World. Uh, why, yeah, that, that I remember that I started trying to convert that into a, a prose story. And I never quite finished. I think I was... Or did I finish that? I almost, it almost seems like you did, or maybe you stalled out at 90%, which is sad. I think I stalled out at like 90%, and then when I decided to, to start writing every day uh, back in like February or whenever it was that I did that this year, that was one of the things that I finished up. Oh, and it okay. took me like one day. I got on it, and I, went, and I looked at it, and then I went, oh, this is, this is pretty much done. And then I just wrote, like, the last paragraph or something (laughs) and called it a day. But, um, yeah, maybe we should do that someday, too, on the show, and people can compare whether they like the prose or audio drama version better. Anyway, this is an audio play. Radio? Do they call them radio plays in in the radio show days? Was it radio play or radio drama? I don't know. For some reason, I'm, I'm wanting to say radio something play, but I think I might be confusing it with the stupid term that I'm sure you, maybe you've heard this before, teleplay. Right, so I mean, <laughs> yeah, originally it was play, and then the movie started up and so it became screenplay, and then yeah, there probably was radio play, and eventually teleplay. I guess this could be a podcast play, but... I don't like that. Oh, there we go. It's a, it's a pod play. <laughs> that doesn't roll off the tongue, though, does it? Pod play. Nah, not really. We should have pod faded, man. <laughs> yeah, we probably should have. People are probably wishing that we had right now at this point in the show. They're like, why have they not started the stupid story? Okay, let's let's move on to the story. Should we do the cast list before or after? We'll do it after. Well, I mean, it's it's fairly simple if you wanted to do the cast list before. <laughs> yeah, there's the two of us, 
and Renee Chambliss involved in this story. So you're in for a treat because Renee Chambliss is along for the ride today. So buckle your seatbelt, folks, and get ready for Sin of Admission. Happy Halloween, kids. <laughs> Sin of Admission by Rish Outfield. <laughs> Ma'am, sir, have you dined with us before? We have, uh huh. Celebrating a special occasion tonight? Yes, it's our anniversary. Oh, how delightful. And your food? Uh, delicious, thanks. It's fine, thank you. Oh, well then. It's good that we can have some time to really talk. Sure, but you can always talk to me. You know that. Right, but I feel we don't do this enough. Eat? You know what I mean. Sit together and just spend time together without the television or the phone or the movie screen or the basketball game or fireworks or a dog fight. Hey, that was one time. Or my sister's wedding or a baptism to distract us. Okay, I get what you mean. And I'm glad we have this time. So I can finally say something. Um, like what? You want me to find someplace else to spend the night? You? Oh, no, not at all. I love you, Alan. You know that. And I love you. Woo! <laughs> but can I... Can I get something off my chest? Something big? Something not so big. Sure. Well... I actually don't really like this restaurant all that much. What? I had to make the reservation, like, a month ago. Uh-huh. Just, next time, don't. Really? But we came here the night I asked you to marry Yeah, and I didn't like it then. Don't get me wrong, it has sentimental value because of that. Just not because of the food. Okay. That's fine, I guess. I, I don't know why you didn't say that long ago. I, I would be happy to go to the seafood place or the Mongolian barbecue restaurant. Actually, I'm not really a seafood gal. I don't really like the fish taste. Any seafood? Well, when it's really good, then it doesn't taste like seafood. So it might as well be something else. Wow, I, I didn't know that. I, I guess we'll skip Red Lobster next time, too. The Mongolian barbecue place is fine, though. Okay, well, that's good. But it bothers me that you don't tip the guy making the food. Well, we discussed this. I tip the valet parking guy, tip the waitress at our table. Why tip the chef, too? Because he actually did something for us. Right, but you don't tip the chef at this restaurant. Or at any other restaurant, come to think of it. Because you don't see those guys. They keep them in the back. But if one of them came out and did a little show for us, then we would tip him. Mongolian Dennis doesn't do a little show. He, he's cooking. But, but hey, it's our anniversary. I promise next time we go there, I'll tip the guy. Good, good. Do you have any problem with Moretto's Pizzeria? Not at all. <clears throat> Although, I do have to admit... I hate it when the guy behind the counter calls me lady. What can I get you, lady? Coming right up, lady. Like he's a shoeshine boy from the 1940s. Well, it's New York-style pizza. That's how they talk in New York. Thanks, buddy. Here you go, lady. <laughs> they can't all be from New York. I, I guess it's sort of a character they do. And I don't like it. I'm sorry. But hey... You got it off your lovely bosom, so now we can just uh -huh. finish up. What? I wish you wouldn't say bosoms like that. It's not cute? Not cute. The saying is, 
Get it off your chest. Bosom is the area above the heart. Bosom is singular. Putting an S at the end of it makes it sound like you're doing an Austin Powers impression. I I thought you found Mike Myers funny when we were dating. Not anymore. Nobody finds him at all amusing anymore. Was it that Indian shaman movie? May have been. Good to know. And you know what else I don't like? Everything. Oh, don't do that. I'm sorry. I I just... (laughs) When you said you had to get some stuff off your chest, I didn't realize how much stuff it would be. So we shouldn't be sharing everything then? No, no. Go ahead. Fire away. Are you painting me as the bad guy here? Nope, not at all. This is not an argument. No way. Okay, because you can admit you don't like something too if you want. Maybe I will. But as a matter of fact, I've always... After me. I hate it when your mother calls you and talks really loud. Well, she's 70. Her hearing isn't what it used to be. No. I hear her say, is she in the room? She does it every time. She does? And what do I say? Sometimes you say yes, and sometimes you say no. Oh. And then your mother will talk super loud, and you become a little kid again. I swear, one of these times, you're going to call her mommy. I haven't called her that in, I don't know, ten years at least. Is everything to your liking? Oh, don't get her started. Excuse me? He's joking. Just not very well. Oh, I see. Can I get you any dessert this evening? Honey? I'll think about it. Give me five minutes. Very well, madame. Madame, did you hear him? Like I'm somebody's grandmother. You know, it's probably something he does with everybody. Little girls, too. Who would call a little girl madame? Somebody called Dateline NBC. I'm just saying, he could be a quarter French or something. By way of Des Moines. Well, (laughs) at least he didn't look down your blouse. Like that guy at that one... Was it the Italian place? Nope. That was here. Yikes. Sorry, no no wonder you didn't want to come here. Oh, well. So, Alan... I've done my little confessional thing. Why don't you tell me something that's always bothered you? (laughs) This is a game I'm not going to play. Come on, then a little. I'd rather not. Get a little something off your bosoms, baby. Is that how I sound? Really? Just not as British. All right. So, let's see. I know you hate it when I shave my legs on the toilet. Oh, no, that was a misunderstanding. The time I walked in, I thought... Thought what? I, I didn't realize the toilet seat was down. It's... it's nothing. Oh, yuck. No wonder. Okay, something else. Something that bothers you. Uh, I, I... I can't think of anything. Come on. It's got to bother you when I use your foot. Oh, I've got one. Just a little thing, really. What is it? Well, (laughs) I have to admit that I don't like the BBC Pride and Prejudice so much. What? What did you say? I I don't like it. But we watch it every other year. Yeah. Could we stop? You're joking with me, right? No, I... I I just... What? I I don't get it. Get your fascination with it. Not my fascination, Alan. Every woman on the planet loves that movie. Uh Uh-huh. If you don't mind, I'll let you watch it with them. Instead of me. What's wrong with it? Nothing. No. Come on. I told you. You go ahead and tell me what the problem is with the BBC Pride and... Why does it have to be so long? It's 
What, five hours long? 327 minutes. Well, that's just crazy. Lord of the Rings is that long. Longer. Yeah, and that came out over three years. So, it's long. It has to be to fit in all the important stuff. Uh Uh-huh. Well, that wasn't so bad. I said something that had been bothering me, and you said something that was bothering you. Right. But the chick who plays Elizabeth, she's not even remotely likable. She's just a nasty, judgmental, self-centered... Well, she's the prejudice part of the title, Alan. She's supposed to be. I don't buy that. When we saw the Kira Knightley version, she was actually pretty sweet. Especially in when How she real- How dare you compliment the Kira Knightley version of Pride and Prejudice, Alan? That movie is inferior in every conceivable way. Well, at least it ends with a kiss. The BBC version didn't need a kiss. They didn't have to tart up Jane Austen in an attempt to bring the story to life. I would have appreciated some kissing. Anything besides the sneering and interminable longing looks. I'm not sure there was ever any affection in the BBC one. Alan, that's the cultural mores of the time. That's British society in Victorian England. It's about what was considered proper in the British Regency as much as it's about two people falling in love. Do they even fall in love, though? Elizabeth never stops harping on what's-his-name. Mr. Darcy! God! Mr. Darcy. Until she finds out he has money. Then everything is fine. Roll credits. Oh, how dare you! That's the movie I saw. Three times, I'll remind you. Well, you never have to watch it again, Alan. Feel better? Absolutely better. Thank you. How can you not appreciate Pride and Prejudice? That movie is as much a part of me as my voice, or my upbringing, or my face. Your face. Or my name. That movie represents who I am. And to hear you bash it... I'm not bashing it. I just don't get it. Then you don't get me. Come on. That is such a crazy thing to say. How can you... Mr. Darcy was my model from when I was a girl for everything I could possibly want in a future mate. I compared any potential boyfriends or suitors to Colin Firth's portrayal of him and never gave up hope that one day I'd find someone to measure up. And? And you... In your best moments, right now notwithstanding, aligned in subtle ways with Mr. Darcy. Listen to you, Mr. Darcy. Does he even have a first name? It's Fitzwilliam, damn you. Okay, calm down. I'm sorry. I I didn't know you'd take this so badly. I, uh, I liked the dad a lot. Elizabeth Bennet's father? Right. Right, he, he seemed like a decent guy, you know, in over his head, who genuinely loved all his crazy daughters. Watch it, Alan. But, but, you know what I mean. I, and I thought Donald Sutherland conveyed, I don't know, just enough frazzle and exasperation that you sympath... What? what? Why are you making that face? Donald Sutherland? Well, yeah, I, I think that's who... Oh... Oh, is right. I'm thinking of the other one, aren't I? Uh, Is everything all all right over here? You think you're funny, don't you? Not particularly. Well, I didn't find your joke all that appealing. Joke? I I confused the actor who played the dad. It's not a capital offense. Sure, sure. Tell me, Alan, who played the father in the real version of Pride and Prejudice. I don't know, and I don't care. Benjamin Whitrow! And I will never forgive you for this. Pardon me, but... What? Some old British guy I've never heard of? That's a mortal sin. You seriously hurt me today, Alan. 
and on our anniversary. S- sir, well, I, I might as well hurt you more. The, the older sister, the one who's supposed to be so damn pretty, she's plain. Plain Jane, gawky, big-nosed, wouldn't even make it in a tax return commercial in the United States. Oh, you bastard. I'll, I'll come back. Yep. And at least the unreal version had the decency to hire a supermodel to play her. Yes, of course they'd have to whore it up to get your attention. To get any beer-guzzling, crotch-scratching, spike-TV-watching, run-of-the-mill mongrel to watch. No beer-guzzling, normal, average guy would watch any version of Pride and Prejudice. None of them. <laughs> All my friends' husbands love that movie. And we're not talking about the thrift store two-hour version, but the only version as far as I'm concerned. Ma'am, sir, please. All I... of your friends' husbands are lying. They sit back and do their duty, pretending to get it, because they know that when Colin What's-His-Name rises out of the water in that white shirt, their women will jump on them like a succubus. That's not true. It can't be true. It is. You can't unsay these things, Alan. You said you didn't like my mother. There are certain things you simply do not say to a woman. You never say their butts look big. You never ask if it's their time of the month. You never bring up how Jane Seymour or Christy Brinkley have aged. And you never ever speak heresy against Pride and Prejudice. I don't know where you think you're sleeping tonight, but it certainly isn't my house. Have you, uh, given any thought to dessert? No. Madame? No, thank you. Just the check, Sivo play. Excuse me? Check. Quick as you can. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed Sin of Admission by Senor Rish Outfield. Since we already did the cast list, I think now would be the time that you would do the author's note. But since you're the author, we'll let you do more than just a note. Tell us a little bit about this story, Rish. Why did you write it? Why? What was the deal behind the thing? Well, I guess now is the time to get into it, isn't it? Because you know darn well why I wrote this. Uh Uh-oh. You're going to lose all our female fans, Rich. Yes. I I mean, I'd like to say that uh, we have female fans. I don't know. (laughs) You can't lose what you never had, kids. (laughs) There you go. So I, I was living in Los Angeles, and I was working as an extra. And my sister came to... Stay at my apartment for fun, I guess. And she stayed for weeks. I think she ended up staying for like a full month. And in retrospect, I don't know how that's possible. She must not have had anything going on. (laughs) But she had one of those little uh, portable DVD players that has, you know, the player and the screen attached to it. It's super archaic now. It's, you know, it's technology from... It feels like, you know, our grandparents' day. But at the time, I was just like, oh, that's, that is really cool. And there's tons of downtime when I'm working. You know, I'd, I'd like to borrow that. And so, yeah, I, sh- I started taking it with me, just watching whatever on it. And uh, that was back in the days when there were still video stores. And you could grab something from a video store and I could watch it that way. And so instead of, you know, watching maybe one movie or two movies a week, suddenly it became like five, six, seven movies a week. And... Uh, One day, I thought, you know, I've heard so much about the BBC, Pride and Prejudice. And, I, you know, I'm going to give that a shot. Plus, it has the dreamy Colin Firth in it. That's right. Who could go wrong? So uh, many, many hours later, I finished it. Mm Mm-hmm. I watched all sorts of things on that little DVD player, but the only thing that I ever watched on it that garnered any attention was the BBC Pride and Prejudice. A stranger, a woman I did not know, I didn't know the name of, I had never met before, ran up to me and 
was watching it over my shoulder and, and she actually said, why didn't you tell me you were watching this? And <laughs> the correct answer to that question is because I don't know you because you're a stranger <laughs> and because I would be insane to tell you that I was watching this. But anyway, yes, <laughs> she watched it over my shoulder with me. I, 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 now, granted, I, I, you know. She only probably watched four or five hours of it over my shoulder, you know, so just a little bit of it. She didn't <laughs> just, watch the whole thing. Smidge. But anyhow, I finally finished Pride and Prejudice, and I called you up, and I, I just, I had to unload. I was not made a fan that those days that it took me to watch that. I complained to you, and I, I, I mean, at first I just didn't get it, but uh, eventually... Apparently, uh, a third participant in our conversation joined in. Huh? I'm waiting for you to fill in the rest. Eh? I'm sorry. You're going to have to remind me. It's been too long. Oh. <laughs> well, usually you'll jump in to correct me on the stories that you took place in, but in this case, no, huh? Yeah, I'm just like, who is this mystery third? What? Was it Abe Vigoda? Oh, I'm, a, I'm sorry. Abe Vigoda was dead even then. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so... I must have been going pretty loud because eventually your wife began to participate in this conversation. And <laughs> yes, my, my comments were not appreciated. Let me say that not just by your wife, but from all her circle of friends that she had to tell about what I had had to say. <laughs> Ultimately, I made an enemy of the entire fairer gender. Because they told their friends and they, they told their friends that there was a dirty man somewhere that didn't like the BBC Pride and Prejudice. And um, ah, it, it was interesting. That and people... it follows you to this day. You can meet somebody on the street and just be like, hi, how's it going? I'm Rich Outfield. And she'd be like, Rich Outfield? You're that guy who didn't like the BBC Pride and Prejudice. I've heard about you. You'd be like, how can that be? We're strangers. And then she'll say, how come you didn't tell me you were watching it's it? It's like my ex-husband laughed at one of the things you said. <laughs> yeah, you you told me. And, they, you know, I mean, I'm going to cast some shade your way, actually. I'm going to suggest that maybe you were the reason that I, I rented the BBC Pride and Prejudice. That could be possible. I don't hate the BBC Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> I don't have the issues that you have with it. But you had told me mm -hmm. that, that this was the Star Wars trilogy for women. It is. Is that not obvious to you now? Well, I, I, I'm I just trying to piece together, you know, the chain of You're events. Trying to remember the story? To try and figure out if... It was only once I had spoken ill of the holy Pride and Prejudice that I found out that it was the Star Wars trilogy for women. Or if that's the reason that I got it, that I rented it, was because you had told me that it was the Star Wars trilogy for women. So it may have come first. I think I'd seen it long before you did. I had some friends that had the DVDs to that. They weren't your friends. <laughs> and there was this time, speaking of being gone for a month from your home, this was way back when, this was what, like 2002 or something. I don't remember when it was that this happened, but it was many, many years ago. And uh, at this time, I was still young. Oh, gosh, those were the days. <laughs> Not once you watched it. <laughs> yeah, I had a long gray beard by the time it was over, but... Yeah, I was still young, and so I didn't have money for things. So my wife, whose parents uh, live in Canada, wanted to go visit her parents that live in Canada. So we were going to get a plane ticket for her. Uh, at this point, I think we had our oldest two children only, and so she and the two kids were going to go visit her parents. And we decided, since we're going to pay all this friggin' money that we didn't have and we couldn't afford for her to take a, a plane ride all the way up to the Great White North, that why don't you just stay for a long time and make it worth your while, you know? So she actually stayed 
Canada with her parents for a month. And so <laughs> I was a bachelor for a month while she was gone. I wasn't really a bachelor. It's not like I was able to just go out and freaking, uh, you know, enjoy a night on the town and all that kind of stuff because then I would be a permanent bachelor when she got back. So instead, what I mostly did was just, I watched a hell of a lot of movies while she was gone. I was renting one, two, and three movies a day. And we had the Netflix, uh, early Netflix, back when they still just did the discs that mailed to your house. And I, we had the three disc plan going and I was, I was making sure to watch one and then get it into the mail so that it would come back and then I'd get the next one on my list back and so I would have a new movie from Netflix every single day. But that wasn't enough. I still had to go to like the Blockbuster video which still existed back then and rent movies as well because you know I had like my whole day and no one, nothing to do. I mean, I could have written, I suppose, but pff, we know I'm not going to do that. I mean, come on. Anyways, so when this uh, friend of mine said, hey, here's this. It's pretty good. I said, all right. I've got five hours to watch that. Sure, why not? But the thing was that I didn't hate it. I watched the first two and a half hours on disc one. I knew that I had another two and a half hours on disc two. And if I remember right, it was actually pretty late when I finished disc one. And I went ahead and put in disc two and watched all five hours at once. Because I thought it was good. <laughs> but it wasn't until later that I realized that it was the Star Wars trilogy for females. Although probably longer than the Star Wars trilogy. <laughs> I just found it odd that every single woman ever seemed to really, really love it. For, I mean, girls for some reason, and this is just a, a generally speaking, I'm not speaking about all girls, because I know there's lots of exceptions to the rule, but in general, girls are not interested in Star Wars like men are. And I guess in general, probably... <laughs> men are not interested in Pride and Prejudice like uh, females are, so it goes both ways. Yeah, you discovered that that was true when a complete stranger came up to you and said, why didn't you tell me you were watching this? Yeah, I, I mean, if, if it had been anybody else but me, they would have taken that girl home that night. <laughs> I, I, I kid you not. I, just to get that kind of positive reaction from a stranger was uh, unheard of for me and uh, and yeah I, I i i have a problem with jane austen in general just the the period that the writings take place in and the mores of that time period mm -hmm. that is just really really hard for me to embrace but yeah the reaction of your wife and her friends who would have fudge and tarred and feathered me was what really like cemented my antipathy for <laughs> Pride and Prejudice. Cause yeah, just just a couple of years after that, there was the the Matthew McFadden, what's her name? Kira Knightley version that came out. And I saw it in the theater, and I liked it. But woe unto him who says that they liked it. <laughs> and so, yeah, just you and I had had so many conversations and years had gone by. And yeah, I, I am not exaggerating when I say that your wife said, you know, it, it's a shame about him. I, we were considering setting him up with my sister. <laughs> but, you know, no, not this guy. F this guy. <laughs> And the conversations that you and I had about, like, the moral outrage, just the, the it's like, how dare he <laughs> that her friends were just, it's like, where is this guy? Where, I want to spit in this guy's face. Like, oh, Los Angeles? Okay, let's do a road trip. That's, that's only seven hours. We can drive it. <laughs> that just really made my loathing for the BBC Pride and Prejudice permanent. Um, because yeah, they're, they're, except for how insanely long it is and how much I don't like Jane Austen and actually how much I disliked the actress that played Elizabeth 
Yeah, and I can tell, you know, that there are black clouds looming just saying those three things. Because, <laughs> yeah, you can only blaspheme for so long before... That's uh, right. You thought we got a lot of comments when we did the episode about cats. <laughs> but I think that the, the story, yeah, when told in a different way, worked for me. It, you know, it just at least the, uh, the, the other one, the, the shorter one, the theatrical one, the... I, I don't know. There's, there's got to be a word for, you know, what what do they call it when the expurgated version? <laughs> the, you know? uh, what are the, the Reader's Digest? Uh, condensed what do they books call those version, ones? yes. Yeah, the condensed version. But yeah, I just, <laughs> I, I, I wrote this as a sort of final word on those conversations that we had. Because, yeah, I remember you saying, her friends were not happy with you man oh geez <laughs> and you caught a little bit of that that uh, foul weather because <laughs> i was your friend uh so i i really wanted to write something where i would be able to sort of encapsulate that in a single conversation all of the conversations that you and i had and so yeah i, I wrote this and I, it was called anniversary admission the draft version I, it's just a sketch. Just I, I mean, I, I like the idea of just writing a sketch. And back when you and I first met, I would write these things with the hope that we could make them as like little short films, comedic short films kind of thing. And uh, luckily we had Renee Chambliss to perform the part of Beth. And um, she was delightful as always. And the, the direction that I gave her was on each of your lines... I don't know if you remember, but when James Cameron was directing Titanic, he would tell the extras, I'm going to give you a number on a scale from one to ten, how frightened you are. And then right before action, he would shout the number of how fr afraid they were. And so I did that. I annotated the script and sent it to Renee with a fence level. One, two, three, four, all the way up to ten. <laughs> Hopefully that was helpful for her performance because, uh, yeah, she she was pretty great, huh? Yeah, but she's always great. So there's no surprise there. But yeah, yeah, it was it was fun. I wonder how many how many people have actually seen the BBC production of Pride and Prejudice. What would you think the? I, I guess with our audience the the level of saturation is probably pretty high, close to a hundred percent. I would say so. Well, if, if we had any female listeners, I would say 100% there. It's a very literary audience that we, uh, I think, attract. Surprisingly, considering how lowbrow, poorly read we are. <laughs> how unintelligent we come across as. It's funny, because it's one of those things, like, every now and then, you'll find some person who's like, I've never seen Star Wars. And do um, you wonder how, like, what, what rock have they been under all this time? It's just one of those things that you can't avoid, but people do it. I've found that most people, though, that will say that, they say it as... A point of pride. You know, it's, right, it's their thing, you know, they, they found a thing that made them different. And so, I've never seen Star Wars, what's special about you <laughs> is... Basically what it has become for anybody like that because it's it's an unusual thing and usually uh, If you haven't seen something that's like a major cultural touchstone you'll and you find out that it's a major Cultural touchstone you'll be like oh well I, I probably better see that you'll be like Captain America with his little list uh, um, Notebook in the Winter Soldier where he's got the things that he's supposed to see and it's like Star Trek and Star Wars and etc to catch him up. You, speaking of, of Star Wars, and this is totally off topic, I suppose, now, but they had on today's uh, Monday Night Football game, they put out the final trailer to uh, the Return of the Jedi. What is it called? The, the la last Is it Jedi? really the final trailer? Because we had a teaser so. several months ago and then nothing since then. I thought it was. I thought they said something like that as they were introducing it. 
They even had like a like battalion of first order stormtroopers march out onto the field at halftime and then they showed it and then they had some dude, I don't know, talking about it. I had to work though, so I turned the sound down at that point. I stopped long enough to watch it. Did you happen to see it? I'm guessing probably not because you're not really a big Vikings fan. No, yeah, it was on Monday Night Football. You could show me future footage of my wedding ceremony with where instead of the vows, we read tomorrow's winning lottery numbers, and I'd never see it. Okay. Did you watch the trailer? I did watch it. I wasn't, I mean, I probably wouldn't have otherwise. Because trailers are sort of spoiler-ridden these days. But, uh, you know, I was sitting right next, I was watching the game anyways, so... <laughs> <laughs> I always, if I can, put a game on while I work because otherwise most of the evening I'm just sitting in a tiny room by myself and it's totally quiet and utterly dull. So are you uh, officially staying away from any spoilers for this movie that's coming up? Staying away from watching any trailers yeah, well, of any sort? I have been told not to watch the trailer. A certain Mark Hamill tweeted not to watch it and the director of the film tweeted not to watch it and so i said okay i won't watch it and so we'll see if i can manage that between now and the movie's release that's weird the director of the film said not to watch it i've too. never seen that happen before but uh yeah i thought that was interesting huh. and, and that's another weird thing it makes me think well does the director not have any influence on what goes into a trailer apparently not huh if you could be this un happy with the spoilers in the trailer that you tell people not to watch it well it's too late i watched it damn ruined everything i'm i'm sure lucasfilm right now is saying is it too late to fire this guy because <laughs> that's what they do <laughs> they're just not gonna pay him i'm sure he's probably done at this point well probably not they're probably still messing with the minutiae Waiting on final special effects and crap. It's interesting. Now that makes me wonder what it was that I shouldn't have seen. Well, I don't know. I, I guess he tweeted again today because today was the premiere of the trailer. I mean, the first time it seemed really negative what he was saying. Like, you know, hey, guys, this is not cool. But today it was the opposite where he's just like, yeah, oh, no, the trailer is great, guys. If you don't mind being spoiled... Now, if you want to go into this pure, then yes, yeah, like I said, avoid the trailer. But yeah, the trailer is very good. It sounded like damage control to me. <laughs> but at least he stuck by his guns. Right. So the other trailer that they had on Monday Night Football was the trailer for the new uh, BBC Emma. <laughs> Did you watch that? <laughs> <laughs> I would watch that. Yeah, I was really surprised that M Melissa McCarthy is playing Emma. But you know. <laughs> Anyway, I think we've probably said our piece. Do you have anything else you want to say about this story that you wrote? This uh, audio, this radio play? You have been married for a long time. Mm -hmm. The give and take in a relationship and the experience that you rack up of arguments, disagreements, conversations that became arguments, arguments where you didn't even realize it was an argument until later i just i find those kind of things interesting they're terrifying but i find them interesting and you know somebody saying you tell me something that you don't like and i'll tell you something that i don't like it'll be fun in my experience it never ends well yeah that's that speaking of star wars is where admiral akbar comes in <laughs> And he yells, it's a trap! And then you have to just get out of there real quick, right as the Death Star starts firing. You know, that's, that's just one of those things. And to, truthfully, I'm not the best at that. There's a lot of times that hard conversations have to happen. And I'm the guy who avoids them instead of having them happen. And yeah, that, that means that there's probably conversations that I should have had years ago and still haven't, and uh, just dealing with it instead. So my years of experience are probably not the greatest. I run from controversy and from confrontation. And there's been a few hard conversations that I have had. 
conversations that became arguments and arguments that were, et cetera. And sometimes I had to work myself up to it for weeks, rehearse what I was going to say in my car on my drive home. And then, of course, said none of that stuff. (laughs) Oh, pretty ridiculous and sad when it comes down to it. I guess I never really grew up and was able to, to deal with that kind of stuff like I should have. Luckily, the Pride and Prejudice conversation isn't one that I'm going to have to face. Well, you also have the added disadvantage that you could have an entire conversation with your wife and finally put it out there, all these things that you've been wanting to say. You get them off your chest and you're like, okay, I feel a lot better. I think, I think we're closer as a couple now that I've said all these things and you understand me and I, and then you realize (laughs) that she's asleep enough that that she'll have no memory (laughs) that you ever had this conversation. Yep. Maybe that's an advantage because you can uh, alter it the second time, say things differently, things that didn't come out right the first time. Nobody else gets a do-over like that but you. The things where she moaned in her sleep the first time around. Oh, okay, that was that was not a good way to put it. She went, <laughs> you're disturbing her dreams by putting it the wrong way. Okay, well, let's change this around. Well, you've told me of conversations that you had your, with your wife, and then the second time you had this conversation. <laughs> you know, because usually the stereotype is that the woman never forgets. You know, one time in 1984, I accidentally called her by the wrong name, and, you know, life has been a living hell ever since. But with your wife, she had no memory we had had this conversation, so we had to have it again. Yeah, that has happened to me a lot of times. And unfortunately, it's only gotten worse since we've moved out here because our schedules have shifted even further out of line. So I only see her on weekends, really, and we communicate. Sometimes she'll call me. Problem is she only calls about 15 minutes before one of the news shows is supposed to begin which is, of course, the busiest, worst time to call me, and so I I usually can't listen for long. So sometimes we'll just text, try and communicate, and to try and really get your point across, it takes a long time. I know that a lot of people text all the time with, like, everybody that they interact with, and most people I find that do that text very short texts, It's like a sentence or less every time that they're trying to text somebody. I hate when I have something to say and I'm just like, "Uh, I'm going to have to like write three long paragraphs, stupid texts, or I could just call her and tell it to her in a minute. I'm just going to call her. But sometimes we'll text to try and communicate. And then other times, yeah, I'll, I'll be getting into bed and she'll wake up for a second and ask me something. And I wonder... If I answer, is she going to remember that I answered in the morning and, and you know, act accordingly? Or is she just not going to know these things? And I'm going to think she does. And so I'll act accordingly, but she's not acting accordingly, and so it's just a disaster. But yeah, that does actually happen a lot, and it's the way things are. Work to get a different schedule or a better schedule. What I really need to do is get writing again so that I can make that my thing. Stop going to work and write instead. Well, yeah. Apparently real writers do both. You could do both. Yeah? I'm not sure. Well, I have done both. I did it for three months, I think, this year, if I remember right. I have heard that real writers write. I've heard that, too. (laughs) Okay. So, yeah, if if both of us have heard it, then I, I, I have a feeling that it's true. Yeah, it probably is. So I guess I'll have to uh, get back to that, if that's what they do. Yeah, it seems like we've run an awful lot of Rish Outfield stuff on this show lately. I mean, maybe we haven't run an awful lot of anything on this show, but uh, (laughs) yeah, you might want to keep in mind that it's probably your turn to run something. All right, I will get on something. Yeah, I think there was something I was supposed to read and then give you your parts. I will get right on it. Okay. I guess uh, 
We'll see the folks then. Yeah, I mean, now is the time when we would invite people to comment about the episode, but uh, I'm going to forego that this episode and ask, you know. <laughs> and we'll just, we'll just thank people for listening. Thank them for listening and not commenting. Right. And then we're going to go head to our bomb shelter. <laughs> I feel bad because some of that fallout's going to land on you. Uh, that could be true. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Have a good couple months until we're back again <laughs> hopefully it's not a couple of months but yeah i just uh, what are we gonna do your house washed away and uh, <laughs> i wish i could say that that impacted the amount of episodes we got out <laughs> all right thanks everybody we'll see you next time i'm big anklevich and i am dan peterson subbing for the absent rich outfield who couldn't be here today all right, thank you, Mr. Peterson. Please send all angry comments courtesy of Dan Peterson. That's right. Dan Peterson at DoonSteve.com. He'll get them all. There you go. Steve. Thank you. Thank, thank Renee also for me if you see her. Oh, yeah. And that's it. All right. See you, folks. The Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine is published under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. This means that you can share the Dune Steve with anyone you'd like, but you can't sell or change the files. It's all good. Take two. Okay, hold on a sec. I gotta hear. It can be terrible if you want. <laughs> Get a little something off your bosoms, baby. Is that how I sound? Really? Just not as British or Australian. Here, let me do that again. I have to look. Well, think of Austin Powers saying, Do I make you horny, baby? Do I make you horny, baby? <laughs> okay, wait a sec. Is it Moray's? I forgot to look that up. Or is it Moore's? It is Moray's. I don't okay. know why it's spelled that way, but I've been saying it wrong my whole life, so. But Moray's was right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. Go ahead. Yes! Of course they'd have to whore it up to get your attention, to get any beer-guzzling, crotch-snatching... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, let me start again. Uh... Yes! Of course they'd have to whore it up to get your attention, to get any Beer guzzling, crotch scratching, spike TV watching, run of the mill mongrel to watch. <laughs>